Good afternoon. Good to have you all here for worship, our third final midweek Advent devotion. This year we're looking at the trees of Christmas, and today we're going to talk about the tree of life. Order of service printed out for you in your service folder. At some point during the service, please take the, a moment to sign the red friendship register. You'll find along the center aisle of each pew. Please pass it down then to the fellow worshipers. We're following the order of service of evening prayer. Not, not the one that's in the new hymnal, so it's the one from the old hymnal, but you're all familiar with it. So we begin then. Please stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Be our light and scatter the darkness. And hear our weeping in the praise. O gracious light, Lord Jesus Christ, in you the Father's glory shone. Immortal, holy, blessed is he, and have not Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let our prayers be acceptable in your sight. Come and help us in time of need, that we may sing your praise in holy joy now and forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 46. We'll sing it responsively, all joining in the refrains, and the glory be to the Father, and the congregation sings the second half of each psalm verse. Psalm 46. The mighty Lord is with us. 
The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, Though its waters roar and foam, The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her and break the Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let us pray together the psalm prayer. Lord God, our refuge and strength, when the restless powers of this world and the fury of Satan rise up against your holy city, watch over it and keep it safe. Be with us in every time of trouble and bring us to the new Jerusalem where you live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's scripture lesson from Matthew chapter 1 beginning at verse 18, the announcement to Joseph that it's okay to take Mary as his wife because what's conceived in her was from the Holy Spirit. And then Matthew very simply reports the birth of that Savior. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother, Mary, was pledged in marriage to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her. So he decided to divorce her privately but as he was considering these things, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife, but he was not intimate with her until she gave birth to her firstborn son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. You may be seated. The sermon hymn, hymn 324 in your blue hymnals, O Lord, how shall I meet you?
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, the first two verses and a portion of the third verse. We'll read it in a moment. Brothers and sisters in Christ, trees of Christmas, as I said at the beginning, has been our theme for our Advent services, midweek Advent services this year. And, you know, of course, if you've been here to either one of the services, we aren't talking about the Christmas trees like you might have in your homes already set up and decorated. Yeah, they're, they're nice to have a part, part, as part of our celebrations, you know, with maybe ornaments that uh, have some special memories, brightly colored lights, and uh, branch, uh, maybe presents already starting to accumulate under the, the branches of the tree. But more importantly, we're talking about some very special trees mentioned in the Bible. Trees that help us focus on the real meaning of Christmas, the real, real meaning of that event we're about to celebrate again in 10 days. Two weeks ago, we centered our attention on a spe specific tree that God had created in the first days of creation, that first week of creation, placed in the center of the Garden of Eden. The Bible called it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God had given a single command to Adam and Eve about that tree that they were not to eat of its fruit. But sadly, our first parents followed Satan's temptation, disobeyed God's command. Now they did know good and evil, but at a great cost. They lost what was good. And now their nature, and the nature that all of us are born with, is one that is always bent towards evil. The tree of sin, Pastor Oftenberg called it, the tree of sin changed the, the very course of human, nature, of human history. But on that same day, before God announced the consequences to that sin, God also, in speaking to Satan, talked about a champion who was going to come, a champion who would crush Satan's power, a champion who would come and restore the relationship between now sinful human beings and the holy God. But then there were also consequences, which we'll rehearse again in a moment. Then on that, Pastor Oftenberg also talked about another tree, a tree that had been cut down, a stump, from which now a, a shoot was growing, a shoot from the line of David, a shoot from the stump of Jesse, informing or, or, or reemphasizing that first promise in the garden that the promised champion was going to be a king, a king who would come to bring freedom, a king who would do all that he could, sacrifice his own life for the good of his people. Last week, Pastor Wessel introduced the second great tree, the one where sin and death, Satan and hell were finally dealt with, the tree of redemption, the tree of the cross. And there, God's promised Savior, that promised branch from David's line, gave his life, offered up his holy, precious blood in that battle all to secure our freedom so that every single one of us would be set free from the chains and shackles of sin and death and Satan and hell. And you and I, as believers, treasure that were carried out on that tree. What Jesus accomplished on that tree of the cross gives us hope, gives us peace as we go through life. It's why we celebrate his coming into the world 10 days from now. It's why we thrill to hear the words of the angels today in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He's Christ, the Lord. It's why we call the day of his death good, good Friday. Now, we're all pretty familiar with those first two trees and the effects that they have on our lives 
and for our faith. But the tree we're going to talk about today, we want to learn about today, is probably a little bit different, not quite so familiar. It was part of Pastor Oftenberg's text from Genesis chapter 2 a couple weeks ago, part of the creation account of itself, because next to that tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a tree called the tree of life. But now we hear about it again, not in the first chapters of the Bible, but in the very last chapter. Revelation 22, the angel showed me, that's John the Apostle, the river of the water of life, which was as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb, in the middle of the city street, and on each side of the river was a tree of life that yielded 12 kinds of fruit. The tree yields its fruit every month, and its leaves are for the healing of the nations, and there will no longer be any curse. So today we focus on, learn about, the tree of life. As I said, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not the only special tree that God created and placed in the center of the garden. There is this one called the tree of life. It too is described as what, pleasant to look at and good for food. But after what happened at the tree of sin, God announced the consequences of that first sin there'd be a terrible curse on humanity, on creation. Adam and Eve soon learned, and we still learn every day, about that curse, about the effects it has on our lives, our relationships, our world. There's drudgery, disease, death. There's pain and suffering from Messed up relationships, evil and, and violence, terrifying acts of nature as the people down in Kentucky felt once again this past weekend. But now imagine if that pain and suffering would never end in your life. To me, the thought of that is, is frightening as well as completely depressing. And so it's no wonder then that after Adam and Eve sinned and God announced the consequences of their sin, that he drove them out of the Garden of Eden and placed a cherubim, one of his holy angels, with a flaming sword to guard the entrance so that no one could come back in and eat from that tree of life in their sinful condition because, well, then they would end up living with the consequences of sin, not just for 80 or 90 years, but for as long as this world would, have, would last. They would have lived forever in that sinful state. Now, yeah, I know that that means that the story of the end of our lives ends the same way. And he died. And she died. And there is that constant parade of caskets to the cemetery. But the coming of Jesus Christ into this world makes it possible to escape that horror. The horror of living with the effects of sin, the horror of separation from God forever. But now through Jesus Christ, there's another option, one completely different. Now through the child born in Bethlehem, we have access to the tree of life. The hope of eternal life in heaven. For most of us, that, that hope was created on us with just a few drops of water tied together with the promises of God's word. It's a hope that's nurtured by continual contact with the one who calls himself the living water, the bread of life, the good shepherd, the one who gives us that good news of the work that he accomplished when he came into this world. And that's why we celebrate in 10 days. Yes, every time we lay a loved one who believed in the Lord in the grave, instead of despair and gloom, we know that they're enjoying a new life, a perfect life. Every time we contemplate our own mortality, as our own death may be approaching, or we see it in the world around us, 
we as Christians have hope and have peace because of what that child of Bethlehem accomplished. And this tree of life is part of that picture, that picture of life with God in heaven. Now, the Apostle John was given a series of visions by Jesus as he was on the prison island of Patmos off the coast of what today is Turkey. And he was given these visions to kind of buoy the, lift the spirits of, of God's people because they were in the midst of a horrible persecution at the end of the first century. And John was on that island because he had been imprisoned there. And so Jesus gave the vision, this vision, this series of visions. And the first 20 chapters that John got to see really were a, a picture of, of his world, the world of his day, all the way into eternity, into to, to past to judgment day and beyond. First 20 chapters deal with all that time period, what we call the period of the New Testament church. And at times it's a it's it's a horrifying as we see pictures and, and, and images and as John sees visions that, that describe massacres, pandemics, death in all kinds of ways. And it closes, those 20 chapters close with the final judgment. Death and grave and those who do not believe in Jesus thrown in that burning lake of fire called the second death. One that will not be an annihilation, but an endless, an endless existence of pain and torment. A thousand times worse than physical death. But the last two chapters of Revelation, John gets to see, well, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. Look, God's dwelling is with people. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And then in words that he can hardly express what he's seeing, he describes that new Jerusalem as, as radiant and, and glorious. It's where we get the phrase, the pearly gates, those as he tries to describe the entrance to this new Jerusalem. Talks about walls adorned with jewels, the streets golden in their brilliance, their shine, and all of it bathed in light that never dims, the light that emanates from the throne of God and from the Lamb. And there in the middle of the city, better than any Christmas decorated plaza in our cities today, there in the middle is this tree of life. It's unlike any tree that we might have here on earth because we're told it's alongside a river or, or the, the Greek's kind of hard to understand here. Maybe it's, it's straddling the river itself, but that river is crystal clear, flows from under the throne of God and the Lamb and, and all these elements combine to present one grand picture of what we will enjoy in heaven. Life, eternal life, in the presence of our gracious and loving Savior. That river again, it's much like the river described in Genesis chapter 2 that flowed in the garden and then in the Garden of Eden and had streams flowing into it. Um, but that river, it's the good news of forgiveness, telling us, reminding us of that living water that Christ pours out upon us with his message of love and forgiveness. It's message that builds within us our hope, our confidence, our faith. It's a river that's not polluted by any work, clear as any of our work, clear as crystal. No works, nothing that, that pollutes that river. No, it's God's pure grace that flows into our hearts and lives and it's there in heaven too so that we continue to relish what Christ has done for us. We have salvation. We have a place in God's kingdom. We have eternal life purely by that grace of God through faith in Christ. It's a message that flows to us through that good news of the gospel, and that's why it's so important for us to swim in that gospel, to immerse ourselves in that gospel while here on earth, to bathe in that living water of God's forgiveness in Christ so that we don't lose out 
on these blessings that Jesus has in store for us in heaven. And then there's that tree, that tree watered by the river of life. And this tree is a symbol of that eternal life that's ours through Jesus. No longer will we be kept away from this tree because of our sin. No cherubim with a flaming sword to ward people from from enjoying it. No. It says here that there's 12 kinds of fruit on it. New crop of fruit every month, a never-ending supply of life, eternal life. I don't know about you, but I love fruit, all kinds of fruit, fruit salad, fruit pizza, fruit I can hold in my hand and munch on and bite into, fruit to put on my cereal in the morning. I'll bet most of you are like that too. Well, here we have this fruit of eternal life, always there, never-ending supply. That's something that's hard to imagine, isn't it? But what a wonderful picture it gives us. Never ending joy and happiness in the presence of our God. Even the leaves, it says here, bring blessings. Its leaves are for the healing of the nations. Look who's there with you. Every believer. People from every race and tribe, language and people. Diversity in its best and truest form. But what won't be there? There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain because the former things have passed away. There will be no longer any curse. This too is hard for us to imagine. To be free from the effects of the curse of sin. No more pandemic. No more disease. No more devastation from nature. No more evil or violence. No more greed or immorality. It's perfect, eternal life. The gift of God to us who believe in Jesus as our Savior. It's the restoration of that relationship that God originally created Adam and Eve with. We will spend eternity in his presence, enjoying all the blessings that Christ has prepared for those who love him, for those who put their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior. We will live and reign with him in heaven forever. Humanity will have come full circle from those first chapters of Genesis to here, the last chapter of Revelation, from the fall beneath the branches of that tree of sin to the perfect restoration, eating from the tree of life. And it's all because of him who died on the tree of redemption. He's called here the Alpha and the Omega in this chapter. Our faithful, loving, and eternal Lord and Savior. Yes, the tree of life. We might call it the exclamation point to that tree of redemption. That's where it was all purchased. That's where it was all prepared and paid for by our Savior Jesus. But it's this this tree that keeps us looking ahead to that second coming of Christ and the the life that awaits us there. Yeah, our Christmas trees are are pretty and they focus on our our attention on on what will happen in 10 days, the celebrations in connection with, with Christmas. Those reunions are nice. And they last maybe a few days. But there's a better tree we long to see. A greater gathering of God's people. People we treasure as our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's around that tree of life. That better tree by which John then closes this last chapter of the scripture with the words of Jesus saying, I'm coming soon. And the prayer of the believer, the prayer of all of us as we go through this life day in and day out is come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly so that we can enjoy the blessings of that tree of life. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now sing the two verses of Uh, the hymn response to God's message.
Thou from that tree of Jesus' shame flows life eternal in His name. For all who trust and will believe, salvation's living fruit receive. And of His fruit souls Please stand as we bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David, we look forward with joyful hearts to the approaching celebration of your holy birth, grateful that you came here as one of us to lay down your life as a ransom for sinners. You are our God, and yet you left your throne above and appeared here in weakness, poverty, and humility. We praise and thank you, Holy Jesus, for the precious gift of yourself, your very life for our salvation. Hear our hymns of praise as we lift our voices to you. This Advent season, flow with your gospel message into our hearts, bringing us joy and peace and hope with all other spiritual blessings. Dear Savior, we know that it is not the will of our Father that any should perish, but that all should be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Fill the world with the gospel's joyous sound, that hearts everywhere may reach out by faith to accept that precious kingdom you've brought, and together with us enjoy your gracious rule of mercy and forgiveness here and the prospect of eternal life with you in heaven. In your great love, prepare us for that, that com your coming. Help, help us welcome you as you come to us in your word, which brings us the news of salvation. Come to us in your sacraments, which seals our forgiveness. Make us ready through genuine repentance to welcome you when you come again in power and great glory on that last day to take us as your people into the, through the gates of the new Jerusalem where we will live forever in the joy and blessing of your presence. And at last, Lord, in this life, bring us safely to uh, remain safe in our faith throughout this life until you bring us to that heaven where together with all the saints we will gladly sing our hosannas to you through endless ages. We ask all these things, knowing that as our Lord and loving Savior, you can and will hear us and bless us. We ask this in your name and join in the prayer you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we further pray, Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, 
that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In peace, Lord, you let your servant now depart according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for every people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, 531 in, your, in the hymnal. Greetings to all of you again in the name of the Lord Jesus. It was good to have had you here for our midweek Advent devotions today and, and uh, throughout this month. Be sure to look at the holiday worship opportunities coming up next week with the, the special Christmas services, Lamb of God services. Um, if you have not yet done so, you can pick up some more. We still have uh, some of these uh, invites in, uh, on the table in the, en in the entryway that you can share with people in your, of your, your acquaintances, co-workers and the like about uh, the timing of our holiday services, our Christmas services here at Woodlawn. 
If you haven't yet done so, you can pick up your 2022 offering envelopes out on the table in the entryway. Those of you who uh, don't use electronic offerings, you can pick them, should be one there for you. And children's offering envelopes are also in your, infor, are, are in your family's information box, so check that as well. With that, God's blessings on the rest of the week.